So I recently heard about this new policy that the EU is planning to implement called chat control, which is very similar in spirit to the features that Apple implemented where they started scanning everyone's iCloud for CSAM to protect the children. Except this feature that the EU is passing is a million times worse because it's a regulation that's being proposed by the government, the EU government. You see, if you wanted to avoid Apple spying on your devices, spying on all of your files, all you have to do is not use iCloud and I guess also don't enable the communication uh, safety or whatever it's called in iMessage and don't use iMessage to communicate with anybody else who has this enabled because it gives them a little bit more insight into the communications that you're having. Or if you're like me and you just straight up don't trust Apple's explanations about how this CSAM scanning works and you don't trust their operating system from the very beginning because it's proprietary, then you can just completely avoid using their devices altogether. You can use devices made from a different manufacturer and you can use different apps. You can use a different cloud service. You can use a different messaging service, so on and so forth. You have choices in the free market, but with the government, you don't get a choice. If it becomes law, then every manufacturer that wants to sell in the EU is going to have to comply with that regulation. And as we've seen, EU regulations, and I guess the EU as a market, as a market to sell products in, is so big and so valuable that even these trillion dollar companies like Apple, they see it as so important to their bottom line that they're willing to comply with the regulations. That's why they're gonna start manufacturing the iPhone with USB-C ports. I don't know if it's gonna be this one or if it's gonna be like the next iPhone, couple iterations coming up. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much because of pressure that came from the EU market. But the part that's gonna be really complicated for the EU is not getting the people that produce hardware to comply. It's gonna be getting the software devs and the companies that run these online services to comply with the regulations. The whole point of this, at least from what's expressed in the legal document, is that this new policy is to protect children that are online. The first paragraph is just all these different statistics about how like one in two children that use the internet get groomed in some way. So really, the bill's name describes it perfectly. The EU wants to control all forms of chat online that a child might use, not the stuff that's expressly marketed to children like Club Penguin and Roblox. No, anything a kid might use that a kid might be curious to try out, which is basically any online service ever. The EU policy would require client-side scanning of everyone's communications, which means that every single company that runs things like email is gonna to have to scan it for bad images. Every company that makes any app that allows you to communicate online in any way is gonna to have to actively scan people's messages for CSAM. My online store, based on when, if it were to one day uh, enter the European market, I guess I would have to scan the email correspondence whenever I send out people's order information or when they email me for questions about their order. I'm gonna have to send all those emails off to some other company so that they can analyze them and make sure that you're not, I don't know, trying to pay for your order by sending me pictures from Epstein's scrapbook. By the way, those of you who ordered merch over the past couple of days, your orders have been processed. And I saw a few dozen emails going out over the past couple of days with tracking numbers. So be sure to check your emails for order updates and to track your orders. And thank you to everyone who shopped at base.win over the past couple of days. Uh, but seriously, with this EU chat control, uh, this is a real threat to software freedom. And if you take these proposals that the EU is making to their logical end, then the end result is, well, this headline from Mulvad's blog that some people said was clickbait actually being true. EU chat control law will ban open source operating systems because the way that I see it, the only way that I can think of to effectively implement chat control 
is to make everyone use an operating system that can just scan messages that you're gonna send out through any app or through any email, text messages, voice, anything. Uh, they're gonna have to do that at least at the operating system level because there's no way that you're gonna be able to get every single developer of every single app to comply, especially if they're not in the EU. Signal, Molly, Yami, Session, SimpleXChat, Matrix, those are just a simple uh, a few that I can name off the top of my head that I really doubt are going to comply with this EU regulation. And if they did, then all anyone in the world is gonna have to do is fork the app because they're open source, or really you don't even have to fork it. I mean, it wouldn't be that difficult to remove spooky stuff from any of these apps because you can just go back to a release that doesn't have that stuff included in it. But if the EU did manage to get, I guess, Apple, Microsoft, and Google to backdoor their operating systems to comply with this chat control regulation, which might be something that they would do, uh, of course, Apple has already taken the initiative, uh, so I guess they're already like 90% of the way there to doing what the EU wants. But if those just three companies did that, then I guess about 90% of operating systems that people are using out there would meet these regulations. And then of course, the EU would also have to make Linux and BSD distros illegal for the 10% or so of people who actually know how to install an operating system themselves. How on earth is the EU going to keep people from installing whatever they want to their computers. Even if they manage to block all means of downloading Linux ISOs, which is pretty much impossible without just shutting down all of the internet to the EU, smuggling free open source software into Europe would be a piece of cake. I mean, it's already really easy to smuggle drugs. I mean, apparently all of the cartels, except for the Mexican ones, have started going to Europe because it's so much easier than going through the land border into the United States. So, I mean, if Colombian cartels and stuff like that are able to smuggle bricks into Ireland, I don't think it would be a whole lot of work to throw some flash drives with Linux Mint into those shipments as well so that people could start distributing FOSS illegally on the streets. That's actually pretty funny. I, I might actually quit my YouTube career and just start trapping free and open source software on the streets of Europe. You know, it's honestly really pathetic that the government continues using this think of the children excuse to justify their tyranny. We know that so many members of so many different governments are, if anything, involved themselves in abusing minors. And every single time someone that victimizes a kid just gets a slap on the wrist from the police or just gets a slap on the wrist from the courts, really, that is a place where the government could have actually done something to protect children, but they chose not to probably because they need those statistics to be so high in the first paragraph of their bill so that they can try to justify this spying on all of our communications. You know, I'm honestly starting to think that the government isn't very effective at all at protecting kids. I mean, sure, there's some cases, there's definitely been cases where police have saved children from horrible situations, but I think anecdotally, you know, these free market solutions to catching predators like Chris Hansen show or all of these dozens of guys on YouTube that do this predator catching stuff where they basically pretend to be like some little kid online and then they get the predator to meet up with them at a specific location and they bring them specific things that they talked about. And then of course they're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff in their chats. There's a lot of those YouTube channels and I watch a lot of them and it seems like they're catching hundreds of predators and they're actually getting convictions on hundreds of guys. And like I said, there's dozens of these channels that are each getting hundreds of catches. And then when I watch the police body camera channels, again, there's dozens of those and each of them have hundreds and hundreds of videos. It seems like they almost never catch predators. I mean, they catch DUI, they, they catch people with drugs. Uh, of course, there's there's shootouts. Those are always the most popular videos. Uh, but yeah, I, I think like 
maybe three or four times that I can think of off the top of my head, I've seen them catch predators. So yeah, just, just with that little anecdotal thing, it actually seems like just the people and parents are better at protecting kids than the government is. But even if that dumb little anecdote is wrong, this is a fact. The EU is not going to make kids any safer with this policy. And I think it's really just time for them to stop thinking about the children altogether because it's getting creepy at this point.